Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N's Robot Review. This week's episode is supported by Ozobot, as I'll be introducing you to Ozobot Evo. Let's check it out. Ozobot Evo is a great little robot for introducing children to robotics and coding as well as inspiring creativity. It comes in a protective case and in this you have some startup guides, a charger, some marker pens and Ozobot itself. The first thing I'm going to look at is how we can make Ozobot move without any instructions or coding at all. For this you will need to download the Ozobot Evo app. From the main screen, if you tap on Explore at the bottom, you get some different options, which are Drive, Crawler Drive and Color Code Chart. For just now, I'm just going to look at that top option of Drive, but first I need to connect Ozobot to my tablet. You'll see that my tablet identifies the Ozobot, and when I tap on its name, the Ozobot and the tablet show the same flashing colour of lights, and the next option comes up. At the top of this screen you'll see there's a colour picker and if I scroll along the top there you'll see it changes what colour Ozobot lights up so children can explore having their Ozobot in different colours. There are also buttons underneath which have forward, backwards, left and right. By pushing forwards Ozobot will move forwards and by pushing backwards Ozobot will move backwards. If you push either the left or right buttons Ozobot will turn in that direction but it won't drive Ozobot left or right. If you want Ozobot to drive forward and make a turn, you push the forward and turn buttons at the same time and you can do the same going backwards. Push the backward button and one of the side buttons to make Ozobot do a curved turn back the way. That's a great way for children to be introduced to how Ozobot moves and what it looks like but there's not a lot of creativity involved there and it doesn't involve really any instructions or coding that the children are aware of. So let's see what else Ozobot can do. Ozobot is designed to be able to read the lines and colours and follow these lines and the different colours will have Ozobot do different things. First, before we have Ozobot follow a line we need to calibrate it so that it can detect the amount of light in the room that it is in. To calibrate Ozobot you need to colour in a black circle slightly bigger than Ozobot is, put Ozobot on top of it and then press and hold the power button for up to 5 seconds or until the light on top of Ozobot starts flashing to tell you it has detected the amount of light that's in the area. Once that's been done you can sit Ozobot down on top of a black line and watch what happens. You'll see that Ozobot followed that black line that was printed on the sheet and I got this sheet off the Ozobot website where you can get access to lots of different lessons about how Ozobot works with following lines and detecting colours. Next to that black printed line is an identical outline which doesn't have any colour in it just now so I'm going to fill that in using the black marker pen that came with my Ozobot. Once that's filled in I'm going to set Ozobot at the end of the line and watch what happens. You'll see there that Ozobot followed that line even though it's not printed on the page it is one that I have drawn. Next up in this template is another outline of a line but this time next to it is indicating that I should colour different sections in different colours. So I should start off with a black line, then a green line, then a blue line and then a red line. When I put Ozobot on that black line you'll see Ozobot drives down it but when it reaches a solid green line the light on Ozobot changes to green. Then it changes to blue on the blue section, then it changes to red on the red section and those last two coloured squares were a code for Ozobot to read telling it to stop. Now is a good chance for us to explore some of the different colour codes that you can use with Ozobot. So I have another template from the website and this one I have some lines that I need to colour in black on this first half of the sheet but there are also three sections where I need to do different colour combinations. The first one is a blue-green-blue combination, the second one is a blue-red-blue combination and the third one is a red-black-red combination. These are symmetrical colour patterns which means it doesn't matter which direction Ozobot drives over them it is going to follow these instructions. As Ozobot drives along the first line and detects a blue-green-blue it tells Ozobot to speed up. 
As it goes along the bottom line, it reads the red, black, red, and that tells Autobot to slow down. When it goes along the middle line and reads blue, red, blue, that tells Autobot to turn round. These are some basic colour actions that Ozobot can follow, but further down in this sheet is another trail with asymmetric colour patterns. This means if Ozobot passes over it one way, it will tell it to do one thing, but if it passes over it in the other direction, it will tell it to do something else. So I'm going to colour in this bottom trail with all the different colour patterns, and you'll see that it says on them what some of these should do, but others, you need to figure out for yourself what it is Ozobot has done. Then I'm going to put Ozobot on that black line and have it drive along and see if it follows these different colour patterns. What I've noticed is Ozobot is struggling to read some of the colours I have done. I think as I've coloured them in, I've coloured some of them maybe a bit too dark for Ozobot to properly read, or I've not filled in enough of the square the correct colour because my black did overlap on some of the squares. Luckily, on the website where you can get these templates, you can also get a fully printed version. So if your colouring in hasn't worked on this, you can still find out what Ozobot does by using the printed version. And that's what I'm going to do to demonstrate to you on this bottom trail. And you'll see that Ozobot is now clearly reading these instructions. It's speeding up, it's doing different spins and turns and zigzags, and that's because it's reading these codes. When it reaches the end of the line, there is a code there to tell it to turn around and go back the way, so Ozobot is now reading the asymmetric colour codes differently as it goes backwards, and this leads to different actions like slowing down and tornadoes. You'll also notice that as Ozobot is driving over these different colour patterns, the lights on Ozobot light up to show you the colours that it is reading underneath it. Ozobot also comes with a magnetic board and magnetic strips that you can put down on it which give Ozobot a track to follow, including colour codes. And it tells you on these magnetic strips what the colour codes are. You can combine these in any way that you want, and this is a great opportunity for children to explore by creating their own tracks and having Ozobot drive over them. Children can also get creative by drawing out their own tracks for Ozobot. I'm drawing out a track here based on the word STEM. You'll notice when I put Ozobot at the start of that word stem, it follows the black track, even though it's one that's been drawn and not one that has been printed. And this allows children to get really creative and create their own tracks, and they can also explore their spelling words by writing out different words, but they'll need to think creatively about how they're going to write them, just like I had to do with writing out the word stem. I couldn't write it exactly as it was, because Ozobot wouldn't be able to turn and follow the different directions to form all the parts of that word if I had written it out exactly as it was. So I was creative and put in 90 degree angles and only used parts of the letters to try and create that word, but it's given me a really interesting track for Ozobot to follow. To find out about all the different colour codes that Ozobot can read and follow, whether you're drawing them out yourself or it's following them on a magnetic track, you can go into the Ozobot Evo app and click on Explore, and there is an option there for colour codes, and it shows you all the different colour codes that you need for Ozobot to do different things, such as changing its speed, different movements that it can do, different sounds that it can make. It shows you all the different codes that you need. You need to bear in mind though that you need bits of black track before and after the colours so Ozobot has time to follow the instructions. If you go on the Ozobot website and create a free account, you can get access to lots of lessons introducing children to Ozobot following lines and following the colour codes. It is an excellent resource and, as I said, it is entirely free for the account once you have purchased your Ozobot. Now that introduces people to the basics of Ozobot, but what about people who are more advanced and are more interested in coding Ozobot themselves? Well for them, from the Ozobot Evo app you can click on learn and there's an option there called Blockly. When you open that up, it opens up a block coding based application, just like most other block coding applications that are out there. Something different about the Ozobot Blockly though, is these numbers across the left hand side, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And what this is, is different levels of coding for different levels of ability. Number one is for beginners, so there are less menu options underneath, whereas number five is for advanced coders, so they have a lot more options of things that they can do with Ozobot. I'm just going to show you how this works from level number two. You'll see you've got different options down the side, such as movement, light and sound. By clicking into movement, it shows me all the different movement blocks that there are. 
By tapping and holding on one of them, the move forward one, I can drag it out into the main coding part of this application. I can then also join different things onto it like a jigsaw puzzle, such as the traffic lights from the light option. And to run my program, over on the right hand side, there is a button called Program. When you tap on that, a page comes out from the side and there is a button at the top there called Run Program. When I tap on that, you see that Ozobot follows that very simple program that I have created. I'm not going to go on and create lots of really complex coding programs with Ozobot because again there are lots of lessons on the Ozobot website for how to use Blockly working from beginners up to the advanced levels. Also though in this Blockly page under program there is a bit called menu. When you click on menu there is also an option there for challenges and when you click on that it gives you different challenges to try and complete with Ozobot. So it tells you what the challenge is and you need to figure out what the coding would be for Ozobot to complete that challenge. This is a great way for people to work forward with Ozobot at their own pace and really explore coding and work on their problem solving and critical thinking skills, which are vital STEM skills for people to be able to develop. Now as well as being able to have just the basic EVO and drive it about, have it follow lines, read colours and be coded with Blockly, there are other add-ons that you can get for the Ozobot EVO, such as the Ozobot crawler like I have in front of me. By clipping the Ozobot into the crawler, the wheels of Ozobot drive the wheels of the crawler and these in turn move its legs making it crawl about. It can crawl forwards and backwards, it does find it harder to turn but you are able to make it turn. The first thing I'm going to look at with the crawler is in the Ozobot EVO app. If you click on explore, there's an option called crawler drive. This opens up a driver just like we saw with the Ozobot EVO on its own. However, this time there are right and left options that you can pull forward or push backwards. To make the crawler turn, you need to use a combination of the right going forward and left going backwards or vice versa. Or you can make it just walk forwards and backwards by dragging the right and left forwards together or pulling them down to backwards together. You also have a hold option there. If you tap on that and then pull the right and left forward together for example, I can then let go of the screen and the app will hold them in that position and the crawler will keep going forward until I tap hold to turn it off. Similarly, there's a turbo option just like on the other driver and if I tap that and then pull the right and left forward, you'll see it makes the crawler drive forward much faster than it did at the standard speed. Again, this is great for children to be able to explore the movements that the crawler can do and how to try and get it to turn. But for more advanced people, because you're still just using the Ozobot EVO, this can still be coded using Blockly. To demonstrate, I've opened up Blockly and I've dragged in four move forward options and I've moved them all to move forward 10 spaces. When I run this program, you'll see that the Ozobot crawler crawls forward following this program. Again, if you go on the Ozobot website, there are challenges and different things that you can do with the Ozobot crawler. I'm just showing you the very basics of how it works because I want you to be able to go and explore this amazing robot for yourself. So now we've looked at the basics of what Ozobot can do from following lines and reading colours to being coded with Blockly, being driven just with the app or even being put into a crawler and being able to move in a completely different way. You can access lots of free lessons on the Ozobot website starting from the basics with drawing out lines and using colours right up to Blockly coding and even more advanced coding with Python and then things like the crawler. There's also some fun activities such as one I'm looking forward to exploring about constellations. So you can also find ways to tie Ozobot into other parts of the curriculum and other topics that you are looking at. You get all of this by creating a free account on the Ozobot website once you've purchased your Ozobot and it is a brilliant resource online for you to be able to get so many lessons and you can either have pupils working through these on their own or if you have enough robots you can work through these together as a class and everyone can move at the same speed and if you're somebody that's not confident with robotics everything is laid out very clearly for you to follow you really can't go wrong with these lessons that they have online
Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. A huge thank you to Ozobot for sending me the Ozobot Evo and the Crawler for me to explore. There's still a lot more that I'm going to find out about it as I use it with my own children, both in school and at home. So I'm looking forward to exploring more about it. And hopefully this has given you a good insight into some of the capabilities of Ozobot. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here. And I've added links here to the other robot review videos I've done, here to my 10 things you should know about series, and here to my series on 100 scientists who influenced the world. This has been Stem with Mr. N, exploring Ozobot Evo.